<laughs> All right, let's get into the waiver wire section. Put me in, coach. All right, guys, I got names for you. I want I want your thoughts on these guys, what you think about them in terms of, you know, what we need to know is this. You, yes, you can go sign them. But would you start them? Would you play them? What are they on your team? What 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 do they function as? Because, you know, if they're a start worthy guy, you're going to spend more fab slash waiver priority on them than if they're just a bench stash because they're a name that had a good week. Okay, so let's start at the wide receiver position, and I'm going to start with a guy that you you know, uh, the bye week guys get forgot about on the waiver wire, a yeah. lot of the time. And so the first guy is only owned in 34 percent of leagues, but he's putting up almost 11 points a game at the wide receiver position, and that's Marvin Jones. Marvin Jones of the Cincinnati Bengals. What do you think about Marvin Jones going forward? I know he's got a, a tougher matchup this week against Green Bay. Uh, I'm sorry. That's yeah. not accurate. <laughs> I put him on the uh, on the Broncos for a second. Um, <laughs> the Broncos would love Marvin Jones. No, it's Pittsburgh this week. Is that yeah. correct? Uh, yeah, that sounds right. So that's not that tough of a matchup. But but right now he, he is playing as a two statistically. What do you think about Marvin Jones? I... I love what Marvin Jones is doing. The uh, the only concern I have with Marvin Jones is there will be there will be those games where he disappears. So, uh, sure, you you cannot rely on him and say, "Oh, I'm getting a wide receiver one because he's putting up 11 points a game," or or you're getting a a nice two. I'll put it that way. A, a nice two. Is he a better than Eric Decker too? Probably uh, not. A bit pretty close in that same category, but I mean Decker's. Decker's just getting it done every single time he's on the field. Where Marvin Jones has had a couple duds, and I, and he will moving forward. But I but Jones is a guy who uh, I would love to have on at least on my bench at the worst if he's not flexing or wide receiver twoing for me. All right, so Stefan Diggs is the big name, and he's got to be near the top of if not the top waiver pickup if he's still available in your leagues. Now he's he's owned in only forty four percent of leagues, so people missed him last week. Six for 108 and a touchdown, a highlight reel touchdown. Really looks the part and has been consistently being targeted. He's starting in two wide receiver sets for Minnesota. So, Stefan Diggs, how much do you like this guy, and what does that mean to uh, your waiver fab budget? Uh, I really love him. Going forward, rest of season, I see him as a wide receiver two. And so you're getting a like, a, like an absolute locked wide receiver two. Over the last uh, three weeks three, that he's yeah. played – he is the number 13 wide receiver. So he's just outside of wide receiver one. And you see it on the field, the the catches he's making. You you said, Andy, and this isn't we, – we definitely are not saying that this is Odell, Odell Beckham. But he's got the same kind of quick twitch thing. He's just very – I think that's called being young. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's, I mean, he, he looks just – compared to Mike Wallace – he's got Mike Wallace and Greg Jennings running around him. Uh, I was a young man once, and I couldn't do that. Yeah. Well, he is he is special. Okay. It's so a Stephen, part of it. Stephen Diggs has to be on every roster. He should be owned in ninety nine percent of leagues, and it, you know, there's half the leagues, over half the leagues that don't have him. He's, You're probably in one. Go get him and put him on your roster because he could he could be as good as guys that you've been relying on this whole first half of the season. So he's doing exactly what I thought Charles Johnson was going to do. All right. If he's sitting on your waiver wire and you have 80 of your hundred dollar fab budget left, how much do you spend on Stefan Diggs? Uh, depending on need, uh, maybe like 15 Think, to 20. Yeah. Oh, I, really? Not more than that. I, I would go more. I'd go 20, 25. We had a guy depending in our league need. this sure. last week who dropped uh 30 something. And we thought it was a little crazy, a little ahead of schedule. Well, the yeah, schedule's think, coming in. Okay, fair enough. Hey, a guy we have not talked about enough, if at all, but keeps getting it done now, back-to-back -back weeks, and is one of the Patriots that has not dropped the ball consistently. Uh, in fact, man, this guy makes more hard catches than I've ever seen. Danny Amendola. Danny Amendola was 8 for 86 and a touchdown last week. You know, it, it's it's easy for me to be tempted to just brush that off with, okay, it was his game, and now we're going to wait another six weeks for it to be his game. Is that the right attitude with Amendola, or is he somebody you should be signing? Uh, it, he's not a guy I'm ex very excited about. You have to look at how did the game go for the Patriots. No Deion Lewis. They had – the running backs were not used at all. I think Amendola was kind of the, the, the fill-in for Lewis and the running game, but it sounds like Deion Lewis is going to be back. 
So I expect Amendola to go back to an auxiliary role. Uh, LaFell, while he had a horrific game playing as a garbage, basically a garbage can trying to catch a ball, uh, they still like him. Tom Brady talked about him saying, we still trust in LaFell. And I still believe in LaFell. So I'm just – maybe – Amendola go does it moving forward, and you can add him if you would like to. I'm just not going to be aggressive trying to add him. Yeah, I, I agree. I expect regression from here. However, if you're in a deeper league or one of those leagues with a deeper bench where waivers are slim, here is a guy getting thrown to by Tom Brady, and he's worth he's worth a pickup. All right, guys. If you had to sign one of these two, Nate Washington or Stevie Johnson, they're both on your waiver wire. You got one spot, and and they're available to you cheap. Which of these two do you select? Because Nate Washington is coming off a monster week, 9 for 127 and 2. And Stevie Johnson is back after an injury and was 4 for 50. Um, I would Tell me who you take. Stevie Johnson. Mike? And Steve Johnson. Okay. It's all about quarterback. And something we didn't talk about in our news, uh, they're, they're concerned that Antonio Gates' MCL injury will be multi-week. <laughs> Yeah, no, it, I don't know. Did, did, and you, did so, you see what Antonio Gates said about it? Was it was so yeah. ridiculous. <laughs> he said that the MCL is a big part of his game. <laughs> like, what, what, what NFL player does not have their MCL as a as at least a decent? My part legs, of their game? my legs are a big part of my running game. <laughs> it's like what? <laughs> so that's crazy. Uh, but all right. My, my point was. If he is out, Stevie Johnson will be. Ladarius Green, of course, is the the biggest beneficiary. Stevie will too. But Stevie will benefit as well. And if they have, you know, another 39 minutes of garbage time, it's going to help too. My Uh, MCL. (laughs) My MCL is a big part of my game. All right, running backs. Running back, uh, the big number one signing that I think is on the top of everyone's list is the 43% owned Darren McFadden. He was 29 for 152 and one. So he'll, he'll kick off our running back discussions. Um, I don't see any reason why he can't continue to do not this, but uh, some pretty decent RB two type production. Uh, is that where you guys categorize him, Jason? I, you know, I, I hate to let these come out of my mouth, but I love Darren McFadden right now. I I, I believe he will take the. <laughs> I I believe he will take over the primary running back role. He is also a good pass catcher, and you could see him in that position. There are two big reasons that if you want to stay away from Darren McFadden, then go right ahead and pat yourself on the back in doing so. They're they're huge uh, warning signs. One is obviously his health and his injury history. He is about as reliable as, I don't know, Arian Foster. Uh, And then the second is his upcoming schedule. While Randall is hurt, he's he's got to play Seattle. And Philadelphia, oh. both, both, you know, Philly, I think, is not quite as bad. The The line of Dallas should be able to open up holes for him against Philly, but Seattle's tough, so. Seattle. Revenge game. Revenge game? Oh, you got, oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, we have to, like, we have to put some auto-robot thing that just deletes Kristen Michaels' <laughs> name when said. Like, it's an automatic bleep. Uh, that would be nice. Yeah, I, I agree, though. Jeremy McFadden is the top. Running we should back make waiver this week. Should make a rule that Mike cannot mention his name until he has ten yards rushing. He <laughs> had over ten yards rushing last week. We just need no. A I mean, like, like a, in the uh, ten ten yards going forward from right now. But he had to, so every week. If he has ten a week, I can talk about exactly. him on the show. Yeah, but exactly. you will have to put money in a tip jar. Yeah. Okay. But, well, hey, he a, here's a guy who's way better than Christine Michael Orleans Darkwa. <laughs> have you ever heard that name before? I heard I heard it on the television. Because he's the set. running back for the New York Giants. He got more reps in practice leading up to the week. Ends up with eight for forty eight and a touchdown. And um, you know, it's early, but looks much faster than those other guys they got. Gross. Much quicker than the other guys they got. Are you spending fab dollars on him? I will spend zero of my fab dollars on him because he is one of seven running backs now. I am spending money on him. Really? Yes. I don't blame you. I'm spending money on him because I had Arian Foster, and I'm taking some shots, and uh, I think Dark was a guy I'll take a shot on. I think the Giants are not, you know, they're right on the in the race in the East, and they need to go with what works. And if Dark starts working, they'll just go with it. That's my perspective on him. Uh I have not talked about replacing Arian Foster with Alfred Blue or Chris Polk yet because I'm not planning on spending any money on those. I might spend a small amount of fab, five bucks, 
on 10 bucks max on Alfred Blue just because. Uh, but he's battling a toe injury in the first two games without Foster. He had six fantasy points and two fantasy points. He only put up a big game when he got 31 totes, and then he was out again. So, to me, if you're in a PPR, Chris Polk's the guy you'd rather have. Um, they're gonna, they've are gonna they been beaten bad, and so if they're coming back in the passing game, Polk's out there most of the time. Yeah, I was going to say, Arian Foster, even most all of his damage was through the air. He exactly. wasn't running that great, and so... Chris Polk might be the cheap. I mean, you should get him free. I, I doubt people are bidding on him. If they well, they are. might now. Yeah, if yeah they if, might now. I'm just saying, I'll put in a $0 bid on him and put him on my team for free, but I probably won't spend for him. All right, you guys play the guessing game with me. Who got 14 carries in New Orleans? Was it Mark Ingram? Hmm. I think it was Mark Ingram. Yes. Was okay. it <laughs> CJ Spiller? No. no. Who got 14 and two touchdowns? Oh, I know the two touchdown part for sure. Kyrie Robinson. He's getting now. He only ran action. for twenty-eight yards with that fourteen touches, but he's on this list because well, nice two-yard carry. That's <laughs> very good. I mean, what do you? What do you? He got in the end zone twice. What do you do with him? Do you sign him? Oh, uh, man, if you want to count, let me on give these. you three names: Kyrie Robinson, Antonio Andrews of Tennessee, Joyke Bell of Detroit. Put those guys in order of your waiver priority. My waiver priority for those guys. Right now would be Joyke Bell, Antonio Andrews, Kyrie Robinson. I would go Joyke Bell, Robinson, Andrews. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd probably go Joyke Andrews, Robinson. Yep, I don't. Um, you. but yeah, uh, those are three names I need to mention. If you're really weak on a uh, running back, at, on running back position, and you need to put somebody on your bench, and you can get them for free, these are guys to stash. These are guys to throw on there, and who knows? And yep. And the truth of the matter is if, if something happens with Ingram, which is not like historically impossible to happen, uh, Kyrie will get the majority of first and second down work. He'll get goal line work, and he'll be pretty valuable to you. I will say this. So I'm a Mark Ingram owner in our main league, and I'm questioning whether or not my handcuff should be C.J. Spiller or should be Kyrie Robinson. Obviously, Kyrie will get the work. My thought is if Mark Ingram were to go down, C.J. Spiller would be double involved as he has been in which case he would do more with more. But, but Robinson I think still both benefit. Get the, Robinson but, will still get the touchdowns. Yeah. yeah. I think Kyrie Robinson would turn into Ingram light. And speaking of stashes, for the people who like to be in front of it, David Cobb from Tennessee, the rookie, who he is set to return in the next week or two. I can't recall. Yeah, he's practicing already. And so he sounds like he will be full go as soon as he's back. Do they need and, a running back there? And Tennessee has no running back. Not, nobody has really taken that job. So I imagine that David Cobb is going to be given an opportunity to to take the job. What do you guys think? Let's move to tight ends. What do you think about Eric Ebron's performance coming back off an injury? Five for 89 and one. Love I, it. I like it a lot. He was a first-round pick in the NFL for a reason. He's a great weapon. I think he's the number two receiver there. So I, I like Ebron a lot. Really? Over Tate? Yeah. Well, no, I, I, I'm i not saying target-wise. Target-wise, Tate has received more than than Ebron, but I believe he's their number two weapon. Mm. The, the same way you could say, like, Tyler Eifert is the number two, even though I don't think he's had the you number know, two targets. I believe he has. Over Harris. Yeah. Uh, over I, Harris. Would, I, would still, I would say Ebron is still the number three option, but he's a very, very well, strong he, option. He's a strong option, and he's a red zone option, and he has performed well when he's been active this year. All the way through. So I really like Ebron if you need a tight end. Um, if you're in, you know, if you decided you were going to roll out Heath Miller last week and you got a goose and you're like, need to move on, I would pay for Ebron. Yep. What about Clive Walford from Oakland? Now, he didn't do much in terms of targets and catches. He was two for 42. He did catch a touchdown. But the talent level of Walford is there. So does that mean anything going forward this year? I, I know that Oakland loves Walford. I uh, believe it was Del Rio was talking him up, saying how he's a complete tight end. He's going to be a monster moving forward. I do not think it will be this year. That's the question is, will he kind of materialize this year? He's only got five catches on the entire season I would, to this point. I would play him if they could play themselves. <laughs> and if he could match up against the Raiders, I think Walford would be a really good option. In a so, mirror match. So in, yes. in all of our fantasy football practice leagues. Yes, in your practice leagues, he's a beast. In um, Madden. 
Madden and get that Raider versus Raider action. Yeah. So, okay. So I just wanted to mention him because he's going to show up on everybody's, uh, basically their, you know, ESPN boards when you look at last week and how yeah. the production turned out and things like that. So uh, let's talk quarterbacks. Is there anybody at the quarterback position that you're running to grab or sign? I mean, we're going to get into our streaming section momentarily, so we can kind of hold on to that if you want. But I, d- I don't see anyone who I – I think has turned into an every week starter. Okay, so let's let's no, just the, on, the only guy that you might want to look at grabbing if it more a long term play is Tyrod Taylor. The more he gets dropped yeah, and as he goes true. on by, you might want to stash him. Yep, that's a really good point because uh, they're not getting it done there. They really could use Matt Castle. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's not true. Nobody's ever really said that. Um, defensively this week, if you need to sign somebody right now, I always think signing a defense on waiver day is the right move because you kind of beat people to the punch. Sometimes they're paying attention to the Darren McFadden's. They're not paying attention to the defense for the upcoming week. Uh, they're probably owned, but the Rams yeah, are just in case the Rams are 30. They're going up against San Francisco at home. San Francisco gives up the absolute most points. Uh, and we don't have them on this list, but the, the Jets may be available in your league if they got dropped for the bye week. Yes, they and play Oakland. People, people didn't want them to to play them against the Patriots. Where well, man, we are having some sweet tech glitches today. Yeah, we're powering through somebody. People. Somebody's uh, microphone needs to like disconnect and reconnect or something. Well, don't do that. It's gonna pop real loud. Well, but you know, we're moving. We'll, on. we'll survive. The Cardinals, like we talked about, might be playing against Johnny Manziel. Or they're playing against McCown, who turns the ball over frequently as well. And if for any reason people dropped Denver because of the bye week, you have to pick them up. Oh, well, yeah, that would be insane if somebody uh, dropped Denver. Well, it probably happened yeah, somewhere. It, 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 somewhere has. Look on your league, because if so, that's... And you know. obviously publicly shame that person. Okay, yeah. the Packers do face Denver. Do you like the Packers? Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, because Denver is turning the ball over. Um, and then Seattle plays Dallas this week, so that's another great pickup. Uh, and and What's make Seattle? sure, huh? Yeah, I mean, if I what guess do you mean? If, I'm saying I guess if Denver is available, then maybe Seattle's available. Oh, you're just saying because they're most likely not available. Yeah, they're a great play. Yeah, you're right. They're probably not available in many. Leagues.